so glad to be here. I think we've tried with Mimi so that I can come here and it has taken time. So we thank God that I'm here today. Uh, before I enter into my um, discussion, uh, I want to just appeal for CB Fans for Africa. Um, John Beatty, one of the greatest scholars in Africa, says Africa is notoriously religious. And I think if you go to Kenya, Kenya is currently 85% Christian. And interestingly, despite Kenya being 88, more than 85% Christian, gender inequality, things like gender-based violence are quite rampant. And this is mainly because of the way people understand Christianity. You know, even among Christians, people are violated. In Kenya, at least every day, you get about five stories in the newspaper of people who are violated. The numbers are so many. And this is because the kind of Christianity that has been planted is a Christianity which uses the cultural license of interpreting scripture and also patriarchal way of interpreting scripture so that we think that the Bible justifies inferiority of women. And where there is inferiority, where there is no equality, there can be no economic growth. One of the greatest problems in Africa is poverty. And um, uh, the late um, Kenneth Kaunda used to ask, it is say that it is contradictory that we are Christians and majority of Africans are still beggars. And he said that, you know, God might be, God looking at us from heaven must be very sad of that situation. That we are called Christians and majority of the people are still beggars. And this is because of the way scripture has been interpreted. And I think we thank God so much for CBE with this mission work in Africa. For change to take place in Africa, the Christians need to take a leading role. Because if the churches are convinced, I think the change will be enormous. If we preach the right gospel, the change will be enormous. And uh, that is where the work of CBE comes in. CBE partners with churches and NGOs to really talk about gender equality. And I know that is the heart of the problem. Where there is no equality, there cannot be development. Where there is no equality, at least we cannot even call ourselves Christians because I believe we don't only preach by words, but people see the way we live. And um, the Christians for Biblical Equality have really worked with the churches to champion gender equality, to really work with the church leaders and society leaders so that we, we talk about equality and um, making case for right gender roles, counseling marriages, um, countering social stigma, helping girls to stay in school, and uh, training boys and men to be gender ambassadors, engaging pastors, and really uplifting the situation of um, both men and women in the society. And I think the work is immense. You know, I myself, uh, you know, I'm alive to that. Most of the ministry we do with the church in Kenya is quite possible because of CBE. And uh, we also, the CBE also does a lot of work in Uganda, in Zimbabwe, to uplift the status of women in the society. Um, I know for a long time, most women who have been professionals have tried to say that um, they don't want to be Christians because Christianity is the one which propagates inferiority of women. And I think we have to really preach the right gospel and say that actually it is Christ who liberates women. And it's scripture which talks about equality 
both God created both men and women equal. So I think we really need a lot of um, investment in the work of CBE so that there can be change in Africa. And I think if Africa changes, the world changes. You know, whenever we look at the newspaper, when you look at Africa, you know, the way Africa is described is either poverty, it is disease, it is inequality. If Christ can use us to change that, then we will fulfill our Lord's mission. You know, in the words of Christ, the Nazareth Manifesto, I have come so that you can have life and have it abundantly. And I appeal that we assist CBE so that in Africa we can have life and have it abundantly. So that when we go to heaven, you know, you will be asked, what did you do about the situation of others? You know, when we go to heaven, uh, the goats will be on one side and the sheep. And the question was, what did you do? So let us help fulfill the mission of Christ. So I think I appeal for that fund so that Christ can be made known in the right way in Africa. So that we don't just say we are 85% Christians, but the gospel which is being preached is the wrong message. So I appeal that we really assist CBE in um, preaching the message of equality and all of us working for the kingdom of Christ. Thank you so much. So I Facing a task unfinished that drives us to our knees, a need that undiminished rebukes our slothful leaves. We who rejoice to know thee, renew before thy throne. The solemn pledge we owe thee to go and make thee known. Where are the lords beside thee? Hold their unhindered sway. Wherefore, says that defy thee, defy thee still today. With none to heed their crying For life and love and light Unnumbered souls are dying And pass into the night We go to all the world His kingdom hope unfurled no other name has power to save but Jesus Christ the Lord. We bear the torch that flaming fell from the hands of those who gave their lives proclaiming that Jesus died and rose. Ours is the same commission, the same glad message ours. Fired by the same ambition, to thee we yield our powers. O Father who sustained them, O Spirit who inspired, Savior, whose love constrained them to toil with zeal untired. From cowardice defend us, from lethargy awake. Forth on thine errand send us to 
to labor for thy sake. We go to all the world, his kingdom hope unfurled. No other name has power to save but Jesus Christ the Lord. We go to all the world, his kingdom hope unfurled. No other name has power to save but Jesus Christ the Lord. Thank you. Uh, my paper, uh, what I'm going to discuss uh, is working towards mutuality as a mark of Christian identity. And I'm looking at a case of Amos Foundation. Uh, you know, it used to be the African Center for Biblical Equality. It is Amos Foundation now. Amos Foundation is Africa Mission on Social Justice is based in the Anglican Church of Kenya, but works with St. Paul's University for training of people in the ministry. So um, to begin my discussion, let me start with Okot Pibitek's poem. Okot Pibitek was one of the greatest African writers. Uh, he wrote a poem entitled, African Woman, What Are You Not? And he says, African woman, donkey, cat, lorry, tractor, water on your head, firewood on your back, baby on your stomach, cow dung on your hands. African woman, what are you not? And I think when we look at that poem of Okot Pibitek, sometimes people have said that Okot Pibitek, you know, is abusing African women as beasts of burden. But that story clearly portrays the situation of women in Africa. Whether they are educated, whether they are not educated, because of the gender roles which, you know, we have to fulfill. And um, an African woman, if you are a professional, you are expected to have two jobs. One ending at five, and when you go back home, you begin afresh. I remember one of my colleagues always says that when she gets back home at, after work at five, a five-year-old daughter jumps because she knows now her mom is back, and that is the second job. So you now have to be a mother, you have to be a worker. And um, African women, uh, generally, we always say that um, African women um, uh, are not in decision making, but we do a lot of productive work. So we, if you look at how an African woman's days begin, most of the days begin at, at 3 a.m. in the morning and um, they sleep at 12, you know, doing all, co all sorts of work. And um, we were discussing with my colleagues at work, and I was saying for us in Africa, we are not asking for men to, you know, bring us on board. We are asking men to come on board because African women are literally doing all the work except for being in positions of decision making. So when the decisions are being made, the men sit on the table. Otherwise, all the other work is being done by women. And a society cannot work where a group of people are overworked and yet they don't make any decisions. They don't even make decisions over their lives. And um, this is the case in which Amos Foundation seeks to talk about gender relations in Africa, and especially in a situation where we believe that most of us are Christians. Despite Kenya being 80% Christians, 
gender relations is characterized by lack of mutuality. Of course, we know the scripture clearly states that both men and women are created in the image of God. Both of them have been given dominion to tend the earth. However, the reality in Kenya and in Africa as a whole, that even among Christians, there is no mutuality. And um, I'm particularly worried about Christians because Christians ought to be different. But we find that because of improper in, uh, interpretation of scripture, there is lack of mutuality. In fact, many people believe that scripture teaches the inferiority of women. And um, in Africa, where African culture used to despise women, in fact, we now use the scripture to justify some of our African cultural practices. And um, another problem is the resurgence of negative aspects of African cultural practices. You know, most of the African cultural practices had a lot of value. You know, they taught some positive values, although some of them also had oppressive elements, but they had positive values. But the way African cultures are resurging, there are cultures which are invented. You know, if you go back to history, those cultures never existed the same way. And we find that that is really bringing patriarchy and um, also teaching negative and oppressive masculinities. I think um, one of the char characteristics of the African continent is toxic masculinities, where men are uh, always taught as they socialized, as they grow up, to be aggressive, which is not uh, positive. So re reinforcing gender roles, which overwork women and lead to women concentrating in reproductive work and not productive work. And um, gender inequality, is the major cause of poverty, is the major cause of gender-based violence and lack of human dignity in Africa. And this leads to gender injustice. And that is where Amos Foundation comes up to affirm God's word that both men and women are created in the image of God. Both are created for dominion. So um, Amos, the book of Amos, says let justice roll like water. And um, that is our aim, that justice should roll out like water. And um, as a Christian, you know, I'm a priest in the Anglican Church. My main work is training of clergy and also training of lay people because I believe if lay Christians are not trained and, uh, and the Christian is not, the, the scripture is not exposed well. You know, we, we don't, we can't have a church. So the vision of Amos Foundation is to deal with patriarchy based on Christ's mission statement, which I call the Nazareth Manifesto, Luke 4, verse 18. I have come so that, you know, not I have come, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach good news to the poor, to preach release to the oppressed, and the coming of the kingdom of God. So the Amos Foundation fulfills her vision through research, through writing, producing training materials, conscientization, doing advocacy work, and providing soft landing for those who are in distress. I first begin with research. You know, one of the main activities of the Amos Foundation is research. Um, all our work is based on the research, and it is because the churches in Africa have a tendency of trivializing serious issues because they don't have any research, and somehow they don't believe research done by other organizations. And therefore, we feel that as people working directly with the church, we really need to do research 
on some of these issues, especially among Christians, and come up with data with which we can confront church leadership and uh, other people. I remember last year uh, in Kenya, the government was very worried because of the rise of teenage pre pregnancies. Uh, a quarter of the girls were doing their exams from maternity wards. And the government was very concerned that how come girls aged from 13 to 18, you know, are pregnant in school. And um, from research, most of these pregnancies were either by teachers, they were by parents, you know, there's growing incest in Africa, and yet people don't want to agree that there's incest. Uh, it was as a result of, you know, rape, and most of these girls can't say this issue. So when the government raised the issue, there was a lot of discussion. And um, the government said that um, we need sex education in schools. And the church doesn't want to hear about sex education in schools. And therefore, the church leaders came up and they gave a press statement. And they say that teenage pregnancy is not a major issue. It is just the NGOs who want money, who want money from the foreign countries, and therefore they are the ones who are somehow cooking figures to show that girls are pregnant out of school. So I think there's a real need to confront the church leadership with research. And I think um, apart from generally uh, teenage pregnancy, there's a lot of gender-based violence in the church. And yet, we refuse, we rivalize it. We refuse to accept. And I think one of the major challenges in the church in Africa is that there should be a lot of research in the church itself so that the problem is not just outside there. Because they always claim that the problem is outside there, it's not with us. So um, one of the major concerns of the Amos Foundation is to do research on some of these issues so that we confront the church leaders with some of these figures as a way of doing advocacy. So that we are not just talking, you know, out of the blue, but we are doing research within the church so that our ministry is based on real data. I think for a long time, uh, the ministry in the church um, is not based on real data. So um, issues like um, gender-based violence, the challenge of drug abuse among young people, um, toxic masculinities, uh, issues of poverty. Uh, as Amos Foundation, we are trying to see how we can help the church with data to be a basis for more meaningful ministry. Uh, one of the areas where we have worked is on gender-based violence. Um, we did a research on the challenge of gender-based violence in Kenya and the response of the church. And um, any time we confront church leaders, they want to brush off that that is not happening in church. It must be happening elsewhere. And um, when Christians come to church leaders for counseling, it is always tribalized. And they tell you, you just be a good wife. I remember as ladies in the ministry, the other day we sat down and were reflecting. Um, there was a case of my colleague who the, the, a lady came to her that um, the husband had been beating her. And while they were still talking and the lady was staying with the man, the next thing the pastor had is that this lady had been killed. And uh, the pastor had to go and conduct a service. And in our Anglican liturgy, 
there's a place which we say it is the will of God that so and so has rested. We knew it was not the will of God. At many instances, the church leadership continues to tell people to, to endure. In Swahili, we have a word, vumilia. You just go and endure. The mothers say, even me, I endured. Because the Bible tells us that there is no divorce. You should not leave your family. And um, that is one area where we are very concerned because gender-based violence is leading to a lot of deaths in the community, a lot of deaths in the church. And we as church leaders continue conducting the burial services. And um, as I was doing my research, many people have said, I no longer go to the, to the priest for counseling because the priest will not understand my predicament. And he will always tell me, you go and submit. And therefore, we realize that one of the main issues is even the way the clergy understand scripture. And um, as a result of uh, the um, research, uh, I have come up with a training manual for clergy and leaders of the church um, on gender equality and fight against gender-based violence to try and uh, have informed clergy or what are the sources of gender-based violence, and also to look at the interpretation of scripture. How do we interpret certain passages? And um, conduct contextual Bible studies. So um, one of the work of Abmos Foundation, we have come up with the manual for training, and we conduct training in different dioceses on um, gender equality and gender-based violence. It is for clergy and for leaders of the women's organizations in the church, for the leaders of men organizations in the church, and for the youth, because our young people are also suffering very much. You know, I teach in the university, and um, that is where gender-based violence is really rampant, you know. Men even beating girls, raping girls, group sex, which people take to be quite normal and trivialized. And I think it's quite a big issue. So um, one of the main concerns of Amos Foundation is to find how to deal with issues of gender-based violence, especially domestic violence. In Africa, the issue of incest is really rising. And yet, when people come to the church, sometimes the clergy are not well trained to counsel. And many people don't reach to the clergy. They reach to the women leaders in the church. So we also try to really help women leaders with counseling skills so that they can work with others. And um, uh, we work with families. And um, like this last year, we really worked with the dioceses in Mount Kenya, that is in Central, and the dioceses in Nyanza to conduct training for the clergy, for the women, for the men's association. I think we are now trying to encourage in the church that men and women work together instead of having women's organizations in church, you know, uh, we have both men and women working together. And uh, one of our major concerns is the way children are socialized within the families and the stereotypes which we have. And we find that in many families, we socialize men to be aggressive and women to be docile. Yet that is not the reality in the society. And I, my feeling is that we really have to have a lot of focus if we have to attain gender equality on the families. And you know, the way families bring up young people, the way 
uh, we train our children what they see us doing. And I think in Africa it's a big problem, the way young people are trained. Um, the other issue which um, Amos Foundation concentrates on is the issue of gender inequality and poverty. Um, Amos Foundation seeks to empower women and men to deal with the issue of poverty. I think uh, poverty is a general situation in Africa. And um, Kenya is always described as a country of 10 billionaires, 100 millionaires, and 10 million beggars. So we have a few very rich people, while the majority of people are poor and cannot meet their basic needs. And um, like I take the example of Kenya, where um, our mainstay is agriculture. And um, in Kenya, most of the women participate in farming, but do not participate in decision making in the farms. You know, traditionally in Africa, farming used to be the work of women, actually, and not the work of men. In fact, in my own community, there's a myth which uh, makes agriculture the work of women. You know, the myth goes that uh, uh, from time immemorial, people never used to dig. They just used to take their horse in the farm, and then the farm would dig itself. But there, there came a woman who was married and of an enthusiastic bride. So when she was told to take the hoe to the farm, instead of leaving it there, she decided to dig. And thereafter, people have been forced to dig instead of just sitting and not working. And it is all blamed on women because women are the ones who are over-enthusiastic. And therefore men say, since you are the over-enthusiastic ones, you should continue with digging, which is the work of agriculture. But so women used to, to do agricultural work. But when the colonial government came and the missionaries, they somehow gave the men the skills while women do, did the donkey work. And I think when I see even many NGOs in Africa, when they do the training, the training is always done for men. But the women are the ones doing the real work. If there is to be change in food production, then women have to be brought on board so that instead of just doing the reproductive work, they can be given the skills and they can make decisions and they can be encouraged to use technology to make work easier. But um, in Africa mainly, women do the work but don't have the skills, and therefore poverty continues. When it comes to cash crops, then women, men have invented new cultures of um, reasons why women should not participate in uh, growing cash crops. For example, uh, there is a myth that if a woman grows uh, carrots or um, kales or these other fruits, and if she goes in that chamber, if she's in her monthly period, all the plants will wither. And therefore, women are not supposed to take care. So when it comes to cash crop, there's a myth which makes up women not to work in the chamber. So men actually do all the harvesting. Because if women harvest, so you'll dig the chamber, but the husband will come and harvest it. Because otherwise, uh, the plants will wither. So some of these means are funny, but there's a way that women are really um, taught to believe them. It is a myth that women should not grow trees. And one of the problems in Africa is climate change, which is due to lack of trees. And yet there's a myth 
that you cannot grow trees. There is a myth that a woman cannot own a livestock. And yet men are out in the urban areas. So these myths which keep women in perpetual poverty and keep the families struggling. So through training, the Amos Foundation tries to work with women and men to counter some of these myths and really change the worldview of the people so that we have a biblical worldview informed by uh, scripture. Um, the Amos Foundation works with widows. I think in Africa, one of the group of people who are really oppressed are the widows. There is a lot of myth around widowhood. And uh, there is a lot of created culture which never even existed before. For example, there is a growing culture on sexual cleansing of widows. That if you are a widow and your husband dies, for you to come back to normal life, you have to have sex with somebody who is abnormal. So that you are cleansed from the evil spirits. And you find women are put in these situations because they depend on the community for their livelihood. And they are part of the community, so they don't want to do away with their identity. Yet we know some of these things are not even cultural. You know, they are not based on any culture at all. It is a in recent invention. And in many communities, widows are denied of their property rights. Um, widows are told that, you know, you cannot plant, you know, uh, in many African communities, I don't know why many of the rituals are around sex. You can't plant without having sex. You can't uh, harvest without having sex. And therefore, you need a man to fulfill that function. So some of these practices are very oppressive to widows, and they need to empower widows so that they can make decisions over their lives. And so they also have, they are empowered so that you don't have to depend on anybody, you know, for your life. Uh, there's a growing trend of the resurfacing of early marriages. And this is now due to teenage pregnancy. When a young girl becomes pregnant, the parents will say, we don't want you to shame us. And the excuse is always, we are Christians and we don't want the shame. So you get somebody whom you can stay with. So the issue of early marriages are resurfacing. And um, Amos Foundation seeks to work with parents so that we give counsel to our girls, so that we teach reproductive health. The issue of sex education is an emotive issue among the churches. And I think there's a way in which the church must come face to face and come to reality that sex education has to be taught. And I think as Amos Foundation, we do this advocacy work from within the church so that they are not saying it's somebody telling them from outside. So um, one of the issues is how do we teach reproductive health to our young people so that young people don't fall out of school and the circle of poverty continue, empowering men and women to discuss issues of sexuality, because sexuality is a big issue. And uh, we have a lot of issues in Africa in relation to sexuality, including HIV and AIDS. Uh, so we really have to have open discussions on these issues. And uh, Amos Foundation tries to bring discussion over such, some of these issues. And um, another major issue is the lack of women in positions of leadership in both church and society. So although women are quite many, you know, we always say that when you go to churches, the people who are on the pew are nearly all women. Nearly all men who come to church will be on the pulpit side because they are the leaders. 
and yet it is the women who are members of the church. And yet women are not allowed leadership, you know, and are not allowed um, opportunity to use their gifts. You know, all of us have different gifts and God expects us to use our gifts, you know, in the church. And yet in many instances, the church doesn't allow people to use the gifts that they have. So the Amos Foundation tries to work with women, uh, especially in training and mentoring women for leadership in the church. Um, one of the issues that we have realized at St. Paul's University is that information is power. And the more women are trained, the more we will have them in positions in the church. So we believe it is important to train women, even if the church is not giving them positions of leadership now. When they are informed, that makes a big difference in the churches. At least they can come on the table. They can discuss issues. And therefore we believe as a prerequisite of having leaders, we have to have women well trained. For a long time in theological institutions, most of the training is for men, you know, because they are the ones who will be made pastors. But now we are advocating that even if you are not making them pastors soon, at least let them have information. And um, also women leadership in society, the Amos Foundation tries to work with the county governments in Kenya so that we talk about women leadership even at the local level. Because if women make right decisions at the local level, it will go a long way. And I think one of our greatest issues is mentoring young people for leadership. I think um, to be good leaders in the society, you need mentors. And one of the things that our young people are lacking in Africa is the issue of mentorship. Um, so that even if I'm a pastor, how many people have I mentored that when I leave can take over from me? You know, if I am doing advocacy work, how many people am I mentoring so that they can take over from me? And uh, for the Amos Foundation, mentoring is a big issue, especially mentoring young people so that they can really eventually take over positions of leadership. In Kenya, we, we used to promise young people that they are the leaders of tomorrow. Right now, we are not even seeing how they lead tomorrow because of the problems that young people have. You know, one of the issues is the issues of drug addiction and alcohol and mainly young people because they lack the jobs, they lack things that, that they can do. Most of the young people are hooked up into drugs and alcohol. And I think we really need to mentor a new generation of both Christian leaders and leaders in the society. So Amos Foundation works for mentoring young people for leadership. So. Um, in conclusion, what I can say is that um, Amos Foundation really believes that um, if we work for justice, if we act, then the gospel will be preached. In many instances, we talk a lot, but we do very little. And I think the challenge for the churches in Africa is that we should be acting so that Christ can be seen, and so that people can see, you know, what, how Christ is transforming societies. And just as I started by saying that um, in Africa, the majority of people are Christians, we are very hopeful that what will bring transformation to Africa is the Christian faith. And if we teach the biblical faith, I think it's quite unfortunate if 
we bring a kind of faith which is not representing Christianity in the right way. And we think that the wrong things we are doing are supposed to be Christians. For example, if somebody is um, beating their wives and they think it's okay because the Christianity talks about inferiority of women. So the main task of Amos Foundation is to preach the true biblical faith, faith in action. And it is our belief that it is Christianity which will transform the African continent. Thank you.